Hey guys, I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop. Today is November 27th, 2020. I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving yesterday. We are having a Black Friday sale today at Fat Quarter Shop, so you will want to check that out. This video is pre-recorded so that I can show you how to make this block while I'm filling your orders out there. So, Block 10 of Social Lights comes in three sizes. It's a free pattern that you can find at Fat Quarter Shop and on the Fat Quarter Shop blog. I have sewn mine using Homestead Fabric Collection. This is a very easy block. This is the 9 inch, the 6 inch, and the 3 inch. This is a nine patch block with corner squares. Very easy. So if you are looking for an easy block, this is easy and it kind of looks like a little sun. So this is Homestead Collection and we have linked the background fabric in the description box. And you can ask questions and we will answer them in the comments. These are different blocks made by our sample makers. This one is made by Teresa. It's the Quotation Fabric by Zen Chic, and it's the three inch size. Deborah made Figs and Shirting by Fig Tree Quilts. You can see they ironed both differently. So you can iron however you would like. Terry made the six inch size using Folk Tail by Layla Boutique. And she's got all the stripes going the same way. And that gives it some conformity. If all the stripes start going a different way, it might get a little busy. Sue made her block with Shine On by Bonnie and Camille. In that collection, we have a new book called The Quilt Bee, and we have a block of the month, and it's beautiful. So those are our first blocks. And our last block is made by Angel, and it is the Cider Collection, and this one is really pretty. Some different things you can do with the block is you can put this dark fabric here also. So I'm going to show you some different things that you could do to make the block look different. So again, these are my three blocks. At the end of this program, we are putting this into a free finishing pattern, and I'm going to make three of the quilts. Two of the quilts we will auction off for Make-A-Wish, and one of them I will keep. So be watching for that. I am sewing today with All Hallows Eve collection. These are some of our previous blocks that we have sewn. If you want to see them, I am going to be putting these blocks, which are six inches, into either a really skinny long table runner or a short fat table runner. So these are just some of the blocks that you can find. And the reason that we're doing all of this where we show you pink and orange and all kinds of colors is to show you that you can really customize this quilt and make it your own and make it fit your home. So these are my previous blocks, just some of them. These are the two fabrics I am using today. This is All Hallows Eve by Fig Tree Quilts. I have everything in my social lights binder it's a one inch binder. In the beginning, I printed this from our blog that tells you every block, tells you the date and the designer's name. We have a coloring sheet where you can kind of color. And when you're making these blocks, you can do three colors or four colors. You don't have to just do two colors. So we are on block 10. So I'm gonna go to block 10. And yay, it's one page, super easy. So I just put some page protectors in from Office Depot. You could just hole punch. I just worry that some of it might cut off. So up to you how you want to do that. So on this one, we're gonna make the six inch size. So I will cover up the three inch and nine inch instructions so that I don't miscut. This is beginner, so each of our patterns say beginner, intermediate, experienced. Those are obviously subjective. So some that you think might be beginner, that we think might be beginner might not be for you. So it's just, you know, it's just a subjective thing. So I'm gonna cover those up so I don't make any mistakes. With our background, we're gonna cut one two and a half inch square and eight two inch squares. 
that is going to be our white. Our print fabric is our orange, and we're going to cut eight two and a half inch squares. So I'm just using scraps. You can see that these are kind of crooked. These are just my scraps, which is kind of using leftovers. So I'm going to take a Creative Grits ruler, and the first thing I will do is I'm going to cut the two and a half inch square. I'm actually going to cut it right here so I have as little waste as possible. Do, 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 that's my music. Do, do, do. And so y'all can comment in the box and tell me what your favorite thing that you had for Thanksgiving was. Or if you had, you know, some people have disasters in the kitchen and something doesn't come out right, y'all can tell us. So this is A. So I will put that right there, A. For B, I need to cut eight two inch squares. So I'm gonna comb this side and cut two. I'm actually gonna cut four inches. I'll show you why in a second. I'm gonna cut a four inch strip. Set this aside. Now, I wanna cut eight two inch squares. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut two inches so I have two two inch strips and I'm cutting it sideways so that it stays in place. If you're not comfortable doing this, please don't do this. Keep that in place, put it back together. Put the line on your ruler up here and we're gonna cut. Now, if you move your ruler this way, everything's gonna move. If you pick it up, it doesn't move. Now I'm gonna put this on the four inch. Four inch, because that's gonna give me four two inch squares. So I'm gonna cut the four inch. Again, do not slide your ruler, pick it up. Picking it up, nothing's moved. Put it back down. Line those up, and now you can do whatever. So those four can move. Now I've got four two inch. These are my B's. Now I need four more two inch. So put that down gently. Match all my lines. Cut, discard. Don't slide it. If you slide it, it's gonna move. Pick it straight up. Put it down. And there you go. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Luckily it worked today, so good job. Okay, here. We need eight two and a half inch squares. Those are gonna go here and on the outside. On this one, because it is a stripe, I'm not gonna fussy cut these squares. Sometimes I do, fussy cut would mean that I would center these in the center of each. I don't have enough fabric to do that. If I did, I would put these this little two and a half inch square in the center and I would cut one, two, three, four. Actually, I do have enough. Do you think I should do it or not? Okay, we'll do it real quick. So I'm gonna fussy cut the four that go right here. These, I'm not, they don't need to be, but these four, I'll try. So I'm just gonna put the two and a half inch ruler and I put that white line, which is the center of your ruler on the lines of the fabric. Okay, so there's one, and you can see that squares right in the center. Just move up. And sometimes I fussy cut, sometimes I don't. I think it kind of depends on number one, how much fabric do I have? And number two, what kind of mood am I in? And number three, where's the quilt going? <laughs> because if I'm giving it as a gift, nobody's gonna notice that. If I'm keeping it, I might do it more, I might be more likely to do it. 
So question for you to answer while you're cutting right now. We are recording this before Thanksgiving, so what do you think you'll eat for Thanksgiving, or what are you hoping to have? Oh my gosh, I will have traditional turkey stuffing mm. and green beans. Ooh. And I'm not cooking a thing. That sounds amazing. I'm showing up at some restaurant that will find my reservation, please, because <laughs> I do not. I did, I did do it once. I did... Um, cooked it once. I proved to myself and Kevin and my children I could and I decided that I would rather pay somebody because it costs the same and it's probably just going to be us. So there's the four that are fussy cut and maybe a dessert. Kevin always always gets a dessert so then we have to get desserts because he gets desserts. What would be your favorite dessert? Something ice cream and chocolate something really fattening. So I need four more squares that are two and a half. So I'm not gonna fussy cut these. So what I want to do is cut a five inch square and cut that square down into four two and a half. These are going to go out here. So they don't need, I don't need this in the center. So I'm gonna cut a five inch square first. And on this, I will kind of pay, I'm not gonna really pay attention to the lines because in the end you're not gonna see it because it's on the edge and it's got corner squares. So cut two sides, rotate, put the five inch line on both sides, here and here. Now for two and a half, I'm gonna layer, I'm gonna kinda do this. There's not really a lot of room here to pull out the um, rotating mats, which is why I'm not at home, I would. So I'm gonna put the two and a half here. I'm gonna cut, lift that ruler up. It didn't move. Put it over here without moving the fabric and cut. So these are gonna be my outsides. These are gonna be my insides. We need to draw a line on the wrong side of all of the B squares. So I am going to use this small ruler, friction pin. Friction pin will disappear with heat later. And you could use washi tape on your machine. There is not a bed big enough at work for that to work. And I get better results by drawing the lines. Now, if you have a kid, they can draw the lines and you can pay them and then you don't have to worry about this step because the lines are drawn. That's funny. Yes, for Thanksgiving, I am hoping that I will have some potatoes in any form. Don't care which form of potato I have. Do you care um, about the stuffing? Like, do you, I don't, there's certain stuffing I don't like and uh, there's... I'll eat any stuffing really, but I prefer having like a ham instead of a turkey. Oh no. Yeah. I don't like ham. <laughs> yeah, I like ham and turkey, um, but usually the people I eat with prefer ham. Prefer so. ham, oh no. Yeah. So now I'm gonna take the four that are not fussy cut. We're gonna put it on one corner and we're gonna pin. When you're pinning, you wanna line up the top and the right one pin. You could put two. I think one will work today. I like to pin all of them before I go to the machine. And then I will go to my machine. I'm going to put this foot on my machine, which is an open toe foot. And I just stitch directly on the line. By having the foot right here, I can see my line and I stitch directly on the line. I do not stitch to the left or the right because I don't get good results with that. I'm using Arfil 50 weight color 2000 and I am using a 2.0 stitch length. And I'm using a 2.0 since I am going to press open. If you are not pressing open, you could do a higher stitch length. Every machine is different, even though 
you would think they're the same. They are not the same. So every machine is different and do whatever you normally do. I just am going 2.0 because I want to press open. Now this block, technically you really do not need to press open, but that's how we're doing the series so that when the blocks touch in the end, they will sew together nicer than if they weren't. So this is called chain piecing. They're all chained together. I'm gonna cut apart with my thread scissors. They're marked thread with our brand new scissor fobs. And here, you trim your corner square off. You can either stack and trim. I don't do that. You can cut with long scissors. I always do one at a time because I get better results. Mm -hmm. Oh, where's the rotary cutter? Where's the rotary cutter? Okay, it's okay, I found another one. Oh, excellent. Found a different one. <laughs> oh no, oh, it's over here with a ruler. So along the lines of Thanksgiving dinner, have you ever had a kitchen disaster during Thanksgiving? Yeah, so one time I tried to make the um, Williams Sonoma green bean casserole because that's my favorite thing to eat is green bean casserole mm. and the green beans never cooked all the way because they were like the real like you know they were just they were yeah so that I don't think it was a disaster but it was definitely not edible <laughs> I think people ate it to be nice oh that's okay Kevin doesn't eat it Kevin doesn't eat anything green so he never noticed and that's all that really matters he didn't notice my kids are too young to remember when I did it <laughs> So when I press, I press down to set the seam. It locks your stitches. Then I'm pressing to one side. You can leave yours like this if you would like to. I will be pressing mine open. So I will turn mine over, finger press, and I'm gonna try to do them all in a line, which is what I do at home. It's harder to do here, harder to do on camera. So one, two, and when I sew at home, I count it keeps it I don't it's probably an OCD thing so and then I'm not lifting the iron up and down which also saves time and there you go they're all done so at this point I would just put them on my table put a clapper on top push it down a little bit and move to the next step which is just the other corner so now we're doing white on orange so you just wanna make sure you don't go to like one of these corners. Mm. You wanna put right on both oranges. So I will pin all four at one time, stitch them all at once. And hope that they come out good. Do you decorate with any of your quilts for the fall? So I do decorate for the fall. I decorate um, my house with the fall and then the kitchen with Halloween. Mm. And we're pretty lazy and we usually don't put the Halloween up until it's time to put up Christmas. <laughs> and that's okay. I usually do some quilts on my couches. I buy the little, um, Magnolia has some buckets and I have some quilts in buckets. And my machine is acting up, so oh. let's see what's going on with it. Let's see if it keeps going. Okay, it looks like it's going straight. It's just making a funny noise. Oh. So yeah, I like to decorate. And that's why I'm making this one, because I'm going to use this during the fall. Now, when I finish this, it'll be Christmas time, mm -hmm. which will be fine. I'll just use it for next year. So yeah, it was just making kind of a funny noise. I don't know what it was doing. Hmm. We'll trim a quarter inch away from that line. I'm gonna use the Creative Grids ruler, the dotted or the dash side. When I cut a quarter inch away, I get less bulk. If you cut it too small, then you're getting into your seam. If you cut it too fat, you'll have too much bulk. So I find the best results doing it this way. It does take longer though, I will tell you. 
if you're in a pinch, you might do the other way, but don't call me if you chop off your points. Because <laughs> that might happen. Okay, so stack them all on top of each other. Set your seam. You'll notice when I iron, I don't rock my iron. I'm gonna press to one side, and then we will press open. And we're almost done. So I wonder how many of you guys are shopping for Black Friday and watching me quilt. Comment below if you're doing both. Yes. Now I'll press open. Okay, question about the pressing. Um, so you've mentioned before you use steam and a lot of steam. Does that ever distort your fabrics at all when you're pressing? So I pre-starch everything and we have several videos we can link on that. And when I pre-starch that has already shrunk my fabric. So it will not shrink once it's already shrunk once. If you did not starch, it can shrink your blocks. but I like it hot and I use the linen cotton setting and I always have a lot of um, water in my iron. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a little scrap to show you what you could, what you could do with this block. And just ignore this piece of, this is an extra piece of fabric I had sitting over here. There's this, or we could do this. This actually came straight out of my bucket from a previous block that we did. So I'm gonna show you what you can do with this block. First, we'll lay it out the way it's supposed to be, which is what we always do. And you want your orange to hit the center. So that's what you are supposed to have. When you're following your pattern, this is how it should look. You could do where the white's in the center. Mm. You could put this in the center and then you have a circle. Either way, you have a circle. You can have a circle or this gives you an X. So you can have an X. Let's go back to the circle. You could put a different fabric in there. Mm. So there's lots you can do. I'm going to keep it traditional and keep the white center. And I will save these in my little scrap box because you never know when you need them. I'm going to put them back to where I have an X. So that's an X. That's the way it's supposed to be. And you can see that I use these. These are fussy cut. It will kind of give it a little bit more consistency. And you can see how over here it doesn't matter because they are on an X. So what I will do here is put them right sides together, one column. We're going to stitch down here. We're going to use a quarter inch foot. All machines have different quarter inch feet. This is the one made by Juki. It has a little edge on it so your fabric hits the edge or you can use a line on your, your the little uh, needle plate. I like to use the foot that has the, and where it stops the fabric, cause then I can go faster. So I pr I'm gonna iron, I'm gonna pin all these and we're just gonna stitch straight down. We're gonna chain piece where we don't cut apart and we'll see how that comes out. I'm keeping my stitch length at the 2.0. And I'm just going to stitch all the way down. Pull my pin out as I get to the... Now here, you can press or you can keep adding. For today, I'm going to keep adding. Since this doesn't have a lot of bulk, it's very easy. I will cut my little pieces apart and I'm just gonna add the pieces and we will chain down that side. Do you have a question, Lily? You're laughing. Oh, <laughs> I'm just enjoying the process. I do have a few questions here. 
How many years have you been quilting? Okay. What, uh, 22. Whoa. That's really cool. Yeah, if I'm doing my math right, 22. But I've been crafting since I was a little bitty. <laughs> and what is the number one piece of advice you would have for a newbie? For a newbie is I would just make sure you've ironed really flat. Take your time using um, your ruler. Try to cut accurately. And if you get frustrated, walk away and come back another time. Because that's the biggest thing that I think people is they get frustrated. And sometimes you just need to take a break. But I would say cutting accurately to start would be good. And having an accurate quarter inch seam. I didn't have an accurate quarter inch seam though when I started. I, I did not at all. And, you know, it's just like anything else. When you start going, you will get better over time. It's like Malcolm Gladwell said, you need 10,000 hours to be successful, to be an expert at anything. So I'm pretty sure I have my 10,000 hours in. Yeah. Now here, I'm gonna press to one side. It doesn't matter what side. I'm gonna press to the least resistant side and then I'm gonna press open in a little bit. This one's pretty. All right, and then out of the three block sizes that we're making for social lights, what's your favorite size? Three inch. Ooh. Because it uses less fabric and it's so cute when it's done. <laughs> so little. They take about the same amount of time. I think the nine inch takes the longest because your seams are so long. But yeah, I like anything small. So when I auction off the quilts, I'll probably keep the three inch side and size and auction off the bigger ones. That's exciting. So I will just kind of, you can use the Lori Holt seam roller too. Sometimes I use it especially if it's really hot and the iron is pretty hot today. And then just go over it with your iron. It's nice that on Black Friday we have an easy block so it won't take you very long and you can sew when you have a day off of work. Yeah. Hopefully everybody has today off except for me and everybody who works here. <laughs> when you work at an e-retailer I pretty much have lost Thanksgiving. I've never really, Thanksgiving's never really been the same. Mm -hmm. Do, do, do. And back on the subject of Thanksgiving uh, eating, do you have a favorite drink that you like to have around the holidays? Drink? I just want iced tea. Iced tea. Hot chocolate? No. Oh, I just want iced tea with a lot of ice. And I can tell you that people at restaurants, they don't know what that means. <laughs> okay, the way you make iced tea with a lot of ice is you put ice in, you put tea in, then you put ice in, and then you put more ice in. Nobody <laughs> does it right. The only person who knows how to do it is um, my mom. Okay, so now I've cut my little pieces apart, put one side right side together. I'm going to pin on each side, and then I'll do the intersections in between. So pin there. Do this, make sure your little intersections meet up. It's called nesting your seams. It's just that when you're pressing open, they don't nest because you've pressed open. So I just match my seams and I'm gonna, tr I'm gonna sew this and then we'll iron it. Before I iron, I'm going to see if it matched. Since it's easy, it might not have matched. Uh, it matched enough. Now see, because the orange is in the center, it doesn't matter if it matches because it's all three oranges. But it's not exact. I'm about an eighth of an inch off on both. But you can't tell because it's all orange. So I'm going to leave it. Press flat. Everyone who's in the room right now is very surprised that you were leaving it. <laughs> well, since the colors um, matched, it's I'm not going to worry about it. 
And now I'm going to press this open. And that's kind of, you know, I've talked about it before. Sometimes I redo things, sometimes I don't. Like when I made Designer Mystery this year, I didn't fix any of the seams. I didn't have time. So here you just want to make sure, let me move this. Okay, I can't tell you how many times I messed up right here. How many times I have done this or this. Oh, that looks kind of cute. It looks like a little flower petal. Yeah, it does. So I, this is, would be the number one place that I mess up by not paying attention. So I just make sure I've got my X and now I've got one side that's got less stuff going on and one side with a lot of stuff going on. So I usually will pin on this side and just let this go under my seam, under my foot. It's easier. It's easier to pin with less stuff on top. So again, outside edges, inside points, matching my seams. Doo -doo -doo. And then we will just do that last seam quarter inch down. And question I wanted to make sure I got to since we did just pass Thanksgiving, what is one thing you have been thankful for this year? Oh my gosh, my kids, my family, they're, they're healthy, they're safe. My kids, I love my kids. So we're just going to iron this, trim it down, and then y'all can get to shopping on the Black Friday sale. <laughs> I like that we did the little fussy cutting. I didn't even plan that. It looks good. Let that sit. I need to make, I need to have Riley Blake make one of these that's just a big old square. <laughs> and then I'm going to just trim the edges of my block. So you can see that I've got all these little threads coming off. I have more threads coming off because of all of these um, corner squares. I don't like to leave those threads on there, but they're perfectly fine. If you leave them on there, it's totally fine. I just like to cut them down. So I will use one of the lines on my Creative Grids ruler, one of these, put it on one of the intersections and trim. And you can see this little white is coming out and that's okay. Just cut it off. On the next side, line the line up at the top and just keep going around. And really it's just getting your threads off. This is a step that you do not have to do I do always do one side at a time instead of a square ruler. And we'll see at the end if it even measures six and a half. So that's, let's see. If we put our six and a half, see it's a little bit smaller. It's six and three eighths. Now, if you put it next to this one that I did at home, they actually come out the same. Ooh. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes if I sew at home and bring it here, they will be different. But we're going to lay out all of these real quick, and you're going to see that they don't all match. And it's okay. So that's the number one question that we are getting is if your block doesn't measure six and a half. So you're going to see, I'm going to line them, I'm going to line them up at the top, and you're going to be able to see that's shorter that's even shorter they do not come out the same that one's bigger and I'm gonna do something kind of like this when I sew it together when I make the quilt and you're gonna see they're not all the same and the reason we've pressed open is you're gonna have intersections that line up 
And so because you've pressed open, everything is going to lie nice and flat. And then I've got one extra one over here. But they will not measure exactly six and a half. Do not worry about it. If you're doing nine and a half, it doesn't have to be exactly nine and a half. It will all work out. You can either put sashing between them or I'm going to go for this scrappy look where I put them all together and I'll kind of mix my light and dark. So you, you know, like, let's see. So you've got like dark, 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 dark light 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 I'm gonna do something like this when I put mine together and the sizes are not gonna matter and because we have pressed open you will see that you will be able to match the seams and you won't have two seams going the same direction so you won't have bulk on the front now if you want to avoid that you could just put sashing in between here but I really want which would be like a line here I just would like them scrappy so that's why I've pressed mine open. Mm -hmm. So guys, I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Lily and I totally appreciate you um, shopping with us and visiting with us today. And we will answer any questions that you have in the comments below. And come back next Friday for Block 11. And we'll see you then. Thanks, everyone.